When I cycle inside on my trainer, I really like to focus on body posture and my pedaling skills and drills. The first drill is one-legged only. It's pretty simple. You just unclip or take your shoe out of the pedal and you pedal with one leg at a time. I like to start with about 20 seconds and build up to a minute. You, will, you may find this quite challenging and that it feels like you're almost doing a one-legged squat. And if you haven't do one-legged squats, I highly recommend them. While I'm focusing on pedaling with one leg at a time, I'm focusing on four aspects of the pedal stroke. Number one is the downstroke. That is where the foot and the pedal move from about zero to 180 degrees, or you can think about on a clock, the 12 o'clock to six o'clock position. The motion of the foot should be direct, directed forward and downward during the downstroke. Next, we move into the backstroke, which overlaps the end of the downstroke and the beginning of the upstroke. The motion is mostly horizontal. You may have been told it's like scraping mud off your shoe, and that's what the downstroke wants to feel like. It is made by pulling backward and upward from approximately the four o'clock position to eight o'clock position. From the backstroke, we go directly into the upstroke, and that emphasizes pulling from the nine o'clock to 12 o'clock position. This phase is easiest to focus on while riding out of the saddle or on hills in a high gear with high resistance on a trainer. And finally, the fourth stroke is what your leg is doing over the top. It over the top stroke precedes the downstroke. Pressing forward over and over the top from about the 10 o'clock to 12 to 2 o'clock position is where I tend to struggle with that over the top stroke is where I feel a dead spot. That is why I do one-legged drills to see what aspect of the pedaling stroke I'm weakest on. And sometimes I'm not just weak in that area. Sometimes it's a matter of getting a refit on my bike or getting a cleat fit so I become a little bit more efficient in my pedal stroke. And a lot of times when I carry over to the other leg, so now I'm gonna clip in and clip out with the other leg, I'm gonna do the same type of drills. I'm gonna start with 30 seconds, build up to a minute, and I can compare leg strength as well as if I'm still struggling um, for some reason, then I definitely wanna get a bike fit. When I do these one-legged drills, they're definitely a part of my warm-up. When I'm in my post-season training phase, I do a lot more one-legged drills, and I'll build up to 10 by one minutes of right leg, one minute both legs, one minute left leg. I like to alternate doing both legs in between one-legged drills just to incorporate the drill focus into the pedal stroke. So I work on the four aspects of the pedaling drills with one leg at a time, then I do it with both legs, and then I do it with the other leg. And it really makes time go by fast on the trainer when you're just focusing on cycling technique and you're not focused on the metrics as much as you are execution of the drill. The next set of drills are our high end range cadence drills. These drills are tend to be in the form of what's called a spin up. And a spin up is simply where you have a certain gear, you start at about 80 RPMs, you maintain that gear, and you increase your cadence over the course of, again, about 30 seconds to a minute, building over time to about 120 RPMs. You may not hit 120 at first. If you start to bounce, you want to stop. And just note um, your starting cadence, your ending cadence, and how long it took you to get there. Then you take a period of about 40 to 60 seconds recovery, and then you do it again. The, again, these drills are really good for warm-up. Doing high cadence drills increases your heart rate. It works on your muscular um, fitness, and it just works on getting you more efficient pedaling at a high cadence. Over time, I like to incorporate high cadence and one-legged drills in, in a combination where I'm doing a one leg only, high cadence followed by the other leg only. So there's a lot of variation you can do with these drills. The third drill I like to do is a big gear, otherwise known as lower end cadence, where you're really working on muscular strength and recruiting muscle, muscle fibers to generate more sustainable power. 
These are usually done at around 50 to 60 RPMs. If you have knee issues or some sort of lower leg um, injury or issue that that cadence bothers you, we'll find a comfortable low cadence. The idea is to go, you know, 10, 20, up to 30 watts lower than your normal race cadence. So if your race cadence is 80 RPMs and that's a comfortable, efficient cadence for you, you want to try to get these lower end cadence ranges, you know, around 60. They're not as taxing on your heart rate and breathing rate as the higher cadence drills. Um, you're definitely going to feel the muscular fatigue is going to um, stop you before your heart rate and breathing rate increases. So again, and you know, I like to do series of workouts where I'm specifically working on one leg at a time, specifically working on high cadence range, specifically working on low cadence range. And then I like to combine these drills where in one um, rotation, I'm doing one leg only, high range, low range, the other leg only. So there's definitely a multiple combination of workouts you can do incorporating these three specific drills on your trainer. And we have outlined them in one of our programs called Cycling Made Easy.